So, uh, are there any further questions of um, Senator Forsyth? Senator Lambert. Just to refresh my memory again, please, Jim. In New England, who's doing this and who's not? Is it Vermont, Maine? Uh, Vermont, Maine, in terms of New England. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Uh, is it? Now, Mass is just decredited. Mass is just decredited. In general. That's not what we're looking at. Right. Okay, um, let's move to the discussion phase. I'm going to start it right out. I am going to vote for this bill. Um, I'm not 100% sold that everything's as tight as it needs to be. Um, the process is long, and Senator Forsyth has done a huge amount of work, but I just want to talk about the conclusion that I've come after two long hearings. There, there's no question that for some people, a lot of you <laughs> sitting here today, or your uh, relatives, the use of marijuana as a medicinal product is, um, well, maybe not proven scientifically, it's proven beyond a reasonable doubt, in my view, anecdotally, and I totally accept that. And um, I'm increasingly concerned about, and not just for marijuana, but for other life-saving drugs that um, our Food and Drug Administration process is torturous, it's expensive, it's designed to protect our safety, but um, I've been going uh, around and around on this issue for 10 years as a member of Congress and now here. And I've come to the conclusion of two things, that um, people that need our help, uh, that for whom none of the other medications work effectively or to the degree that medical marijuana does in the folks that it's necessary for need our help, A, and that's tilting me toward the side that says I'm, I'm going to, you know, vote for something even though I still have concerns about it. And the second is that I think there need, if it's going to be a scheduled drug, which is what it should be, dispensed under federal guidelines, it's like a lot of other things, states have to provide leadership roles in the federal government. And um, I, after my friend Tony Woody, uh, who you all remember, sat in the chair, uh, talked about what his experience was, and um, other people that I've known for my lifetime uh, contacted me. It's just, the needle is tipping. I do. So, that being said, I think Jim has done a, a great job of tightening it up. I think this committee, if if the vote is that it's ought to pass, we're going to have to defend it on the floor. Defending it on the floor means we need to continue to work with uh, folks in the law enforcement community to make sure this is within the four walls that we expect it is. I think Senator DeBoise's um, idea of a sunset 2016 is a way to make sure that there's accountability of the program to make sure that uh, the types of problems that have happened in other states, most notably California, don't come here. Uh, I think that that's, a, and I'm assuming they'll make that as, a, as an amendment. But yeah. I just, as, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and thought uh, folks who want to understand how I come to change my view on it. So, other discussion? I, uh, I've had trouble with this bill. Really wrestled with it. I have fallen medical marijuana. I understand that the use of this is very beneficial to some patients. But I've always had a very uncomfortable feeling with the distribution how people get it. I'm not completely happy with the way it's being done in this bill, but with 
the sunset provision so that we can have some kind of control so law enforcement can come back and tell us this isn't a problem, it's working, and I'm comfortable. Um, and I'm going to vote for this with that caveat that those that amendment is going to be on the floor to, uh, to make it comfortable. else. Kurt, no, Jim, you worked as hard on this as anyone was on anything. We've all seen some real big pieces of legislation mm -hmm. that are very complex. I tip my hat to you. You've done a lot of work. Um, like all of us, we struggle with the stigma and the challenge that we have of what marijuana has had and the potential ramifications of it. Senator Boyd, like you, I really struggle with the distribution part. Um, and I think we are remiss this morning to talk about <clears throat> what to do on distribution if the feds come around. But Senator Bradley, you say, I believe states can the federal government doesn't need to. If we're going with it, leave us, it's sure as heck not to have. Um, so in the House, I think maybe we'll have to do some discussions that if the feds do step up, there should be some provision that go back to state controlled dispensaries so there's a prescription in the pharmacy so we will have to discuss them on a later date um, i wrestle real hard but i think this has gone, come a long way i truly believe as some of us many of you know i spent a lifetime on oxycontin percocets i understand the downside of drugs um, that this is something that can help and that i think we should be supporting Senator Kelly. Yes, um, thank you. Um, this, this is not a new issue. We've had this come before us before. Um, and I think that what we're seeing in this piece of legislation from as it's moved forward, is it continues to get tighter and tighter. Um, and looking at all the issues that I think a lot of it, a lot of people had some doubts about. So I think uh, uh, it is a solid bill in regard to this particular subject. Um, I believe that the reason that we keep struggling with this and it's not going to be FDA is because it has cultural stigma to it. And so I don't think that the essence of, uh, I, I think the essence of it, of uh, medical marijuana, uh, we heard testimony that it has a, a good, it's, it's a good drug for people with those symptoms compared to many other drugs that are, go through the FDA that do not provide a quality of life for people. We heard testimony of parents who say they can't parent um, because they feel they're drugged when they are giving prescription drugs. Medical marijuana allow them to continue to be a good parent, to be a part of their family, to work. Um, so I think it's a quality of life issue for me. Uh, and um, it's just a matter of time that I think the stigma would be gone anyway. And there was so much testimony and evidence I think the bottom line is a quality of life. So uh, I'm going to support this bill, and I hope we can move it on. Anyone else? <laughs> 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 Sorry, brother. Wow. All eyes on you. I, you know, I struggle too. I know you were up all night the other night on this. I was up most of the last night on this, going back and forth, calling family, friends. Uh, and I walked into the film ready to vote against it, but I tell you what, I think it's the sunset provision that has got put me over the top. But is everybody in agreement? I don't, I'm a little concerned about a floor on that one, because I don't want to vote for this unless that is in there. Actually, I think that, and, and it, uh, Senator DeBoy is going to put it in the form of the amendment, um, that would include this language that's upon the demise of the patient. I don't know exactly where it would go. We'll have to trust Robin and Legislative Services on that. And he's also going to move what will become a Section 5, which would sunset, or it, it'll be called a prospective repeal on July 1, 2016. Okay? So that'll be a committee amendment if everybody's right. And if, if we're ready, I think Senator DeBoy has moved that amendment, right? Yes, I have. Second by Senator Sanborn. All right. So, Robin, are you clear? Well, 
we're going to add this, add the sunset, and on page three, we're going to change cell to transfer. Right. I forgot about that. That was your trick on Okay. So, so all transfer. Mm -hmm. So no, no, this trip, there is no cell. There is no cell. That's part of what makes this work. Yeah. There's no compensation. Let me just play lawyer for a minute. Which one would cells or transfers? Because I'm trying to think of a provision where there's a selling but no transfer. But there shouldn't be any sales. I'm just saying that they're selling it, it's a felony. So right. you want to take that word out? Yeah, so take sell out and put transfer in because all people can do is transfer from a facility Care that they're growing, from a caregiver or someone who's growing, to the caregiver, to the patient. There's no ability to sell them. So that's against the law. That's what I'm saying. It won't be against the law if you take sell out. The only thing will be there will be transfer. Now I know what everybody's trying so to where, say. So where where are we? Okay, we are on page, we are on page five, line eight. And I'm just saying, what's wrong with sell? What's wrong with sell or transfer rather than just transfer? I don't think I don't think we can agree. There's oh no, actually I think there is right there is because right. because on line nine they're not a qualifying patient. Although I raised the question, I think mechanically they can sell or transfer. But effectively, we're trying to keep money out of this. I just don't think they understand it's a We don't allow to sell. We only allow people to be an additional thing. No. 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 We're talking about what is it? My buddy down the basement, and I can give him a choice. Well, actually, selling is already illegal without it being even in here. Right. But transferring. Mr. Chair, if we do a friend. I can just make one comment I'll clarify this. Just so you understand, this is an enhanced additional penalty. The, the original penalty, I mean, the penalties that are already on the books for distributing marijuana would still apply, and this is an enhanced penalty that would apply to patients and caregivers. So whether you change it to sell or transfer, it's still going to be already illegal under current law for patients or caregivers to divert marijuana to a non card holder patient. So what this, you're suggesting is we don't need to change this at all? I don't think you do, but if you do, it's fine, but it's already illegal anyway, and this is an enhanced penalty. That's kind of my point. So there's a, there's a set of laws on the books for selling or transferring. No, this would be a state law. No, I'm saying there's already a law on the books. Mm -hmm. uh, state law on the books, regardless of this bill right here, there's a state law on the books against selling or transferring. And I think the language might be, it's been a long time since I've been criminal the law, but it might be sell or transfer. You can be charged with distribution, okay. whether felony distribution, whether or not you receive compensation or not. It's still right. considered right. Sell or transfer. I think what I'm hearing from you is you want it consistent with state law. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Not only do I want, want it, well, first of all, I want it consistent with state law. But like you're saying, this is an enhanced penalty. This is no. If right. You, if you possess marijuana right now, it's not a felony. It's not a third class B felony. Right. It depends on how much you have and whether or not you have intent to distribute. Okay. Well, okay. But this, no matter how much you have. You're a caregiver or a uh, patient, and you sell or transfer. It's a class B felony. Overnose. In this case, it's an additional okay. felony, and the question I that, see. that would be decided here is whether or not, for the enhanced penalty, you'd want to make it a sale or just a transfer. A sale would be transfer money. A transfer is just if a patient gave a non-patient marijuana, they'd be guilty of a felony already. Would they be guilty of the enhanced felony? Is the question. Just to follow up, I just, I just want to make sure we're either on the same page or not. And I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying to think of a situation, and here's, here's a bad hypothetical perhaps, where I sell, I, I turn to someone and I sell them the marijuana, I'm kidding, I sell them the marijuana in my house, but I'm like, I'm not giving you anything, but he takes the money. But So he's going to go pick it up or something like that, okay? And I'm just saying that if there is no hand-to-hand -hand transfer and someone can't prove I gave it to you but I sold the marijuana in that home, then that's the class B felt. Or am I getting too deep in the weeds because I'm just trying to block every... And, and I guess what I'm saying is I don't see why anyone has an issue against sale or transfer if, if we're going to transfer. Okay. So 
sale or transfer. Do you want me to get that? Mm -hmm. All right, so the Deep Boy Sanborn Amendment has three parts. We're going to add the word transfer on uh, line eight of page five. Or transfer. Or transfer, I'm sorry. And we're going to put the demise language, this language, in wherever legislative services puts it in. That's the second. And then the perspective reveals uh, new section five at the end. Okay? All right. So, we all clear? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, the motion is ought to pass on the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, it carries unanimously. Who wants to make the ought to pass as amended motion? All right, so it's been made by Senator Sanborn, seconded by Senator DeBoy. Any further discussion? I just want to thank everybody for being so patient with us today. And um, uh, I guess that's the further discussion. So seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the Ought to pass as amended motion signified by saying aye. 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 Uh, it's unanimous. And who would like to take this out? Yes, I will. I'm I mean, I, I, it I'm, doesn't I'm, matter. I'm, I'm asking if somebody would like to take it out. I'll, I'll take it out. Okay. Of course, Senator I had Sanborn that, of course I had a momentary hope that we talk about the consent calendar. I did too. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> think I'd rule against that. That's why I didn't bring it up. But. <laughs> okay. If anything ever comes up, it's an FN bill. You can't do it. 